Bank at Walmart and compare the prices Canada versus Mexico. He's top two. I knew he is up to something not good. I was scared. Bus passed by and didn't stop. What just happened? In today's video, I'm going to share with you how my retirement in Mexico compares to life in Canada. Many years ago, I used to live not too far from this neighborhood. And believe me, it didn't look like this at all. It's changed a lot and not to a good side. Looks like buildings didn't have maintenance for a long, long time. Wow, what a difference. I want to show you real estate prices in suburb of Vancouver. Just look at this price. House for sale. And the asking price is 2.6 million this house. Friends, in 2021, I left Vancouver, Canada to retire in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. In today's video, I will share my thoughts on changes I see in Vancouver and how life in Vancouver now compares to life in Puerto Vallarta, in my opinion and recent experience. I will share examples of medical service, rental prices, cost of groceries, and public transportation in Vancouver versus Puerto Vallarta. If you're considering retirement in Mexico, make sure to watch until the very end, friends. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to my channel. Larissa is here. 64 and feeling fabulous. Moved to Puerto Vallarta in 2021 and since living my best life in Mexico. I lived in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico for almost four years. But this summer, I came back to Vancouver, Canada for two months vacation. And before moving to PV, I lived in Vancouver for 20 years. Coming back here has been a very eye-opening experience. So let me share with you how retiring in Mexico was the best decision for me and could be for you. Let's dive in. Friends, are you considering retiring in Mexico? We have a couple of great resources for you. Number one, Mexico Relocation Guide, link below answering all your questions and more. And second, if you're considering retiring in Puerto Vallarta, make sure to get on our free newsletter list. We share a lot of useful tips and we'll be hosting in-person events starting in December, 2024. We would love to meet you and help you make the best retirement decision. So I arrived to Vancouver uh, late at night and on my very next morning, I went for coffee. So walking to the coffee shop and I was shocked by the amount of homeless people on the streets. We have had that problem in Vancouver and areas before, but not as much as now. They are everywhere at the SkyTrain stations, at the park, at the coffee shops, at the kids' playgrounds. I was going to the bank and there was a man or woman, hard to say, sleeping right in the middle of the street, blocking it off. So I have to back up, turn around and enter the bank from another side and most of these homeless people are drug addicts in mexico in the middle of the day you can see people are resting on the grass under the tree 
just taking a break from work or um, escaping the heat. Um, you can also see some tents on the beach, but these people are young backpack travelers. They are not homeless. Today, I was working out outside the gym, and here was a young fellow working with a small bucket. He came up to me and said, be careful walking on the grass here. So I asked, what's the matter? He explained he works at the gym, and one of his duties is to go outside every three, four hours to clean up and dispose used syringes and needles left behind by drug addicts. And here is the skateboard park right behind me and volleyball. Kids come to play. So his job is to keep this area safe for the kids. No words. How terrible is that? Shelter for homeless is right across the street from the gym. This new program of free drug supplies to those struggling with addiction was introduced in Canada a few years ago. Amount of homeless and drug addicts in Vancouver and suburbs increased, leading to more shelters for them. And these areas are not safe anymore. Vancouver changed. So many homeless and drug addicts. I honestly don't feel safe walking at night in some areas in Vancouver, especially after one incident happened to me a few days ago. Let me tell you the story. One day I was visiting my friends in downtown Vancouver and returning back home late at night. I got off the SkyTrain station and the place I'm staying at is just five minutes walk. It's 11.30 p.m., it's dark, no people around. I'm walking down the street and with the corner of my eye, I noticed some man is walking behind me at the same pace I was walking. He had baggy clothes on him and, you know, he didn't look right to me at all. So I stopped and pretend I'm checking something in my purse. He stopped too. I knew he is up to something not good. I was scared. And I'm thinking, if I continue to walk to my house, I had to turn to the very dark back alley. No, it's dangerous. And I had a different plan. I suddenly turn around and I start walking towards him really fast. At the same time, waving with my hand, pretending I'm talking to someone way behind him. He froze. He did not expect me coming towards him. So I passed him by safely and I started to run to the police car, which was parked on the side of this park right there. Thanks God we have lots of police cars running around. So uh, I asked them to give me a ride home because some man was following me and this man disappeared. Of course, they gave me a ride and watched me safely entering the building. It was a very scary situation. I never felt this way before, living in Vancouver for 20 years. Some of my friends and followers, after learning that I moved to Mexico, asked me the same question. Larissa, isn't it dangerous to live in Mexico? And I'm going to tell you, friends, I live in Puerto Vallarta, in Nuevo Nayarit, and it is absolutely safe. Yes, Puerto Vallarta is a touristy town and of course government uh, do their best job to keep everybody safe. But my friend Leila and I travel around Mexico, just two single ladies. And believe me, we never feel scared or unsafe in Mexico, in some rural parts of Mexico. But of course, you have to be wise and judge the situation. I would never go to the unknown neighborhood, especially at night. But 
This rule applies anywhere in the world. Increase in drug addicts leads to another problem. Increase in medical support for these people. I've noticed that there are ambulances, sirens on, running on the streets almost every 15-30 minutes. And look who are they dealing with? Drugs overdose. And drugs in Mexico are prohibited. It's the law. You go to jail if you carry drugs with you. And of course, it doesn't mean there are no homeless or drug addicts in Mexico, but it's not as obvious as in Canada. In my personal opinion, this new Canadian law of free drug supplies is gonna have impact on the young generation. Medical service in Canada have had always problems, such as in order to see a specialist or do MRI or go through operation, you have to be on a wait list. And it could be from a few months up to year or longer. So I'm in Vancouver and I decided to see family doctor and do a regular checkup and a blood test. So I phoned up the office and the first available appointment was, have a guess, in two months. But if I choose to see other doctor, they can put me on the wait list and maybe in two, three weeks, I can see another doctor. Thank you. So then another day I was walking around and I see a walking in clinic and I decided, oh, okay, uh, let's see, maybe I can see other doctors. So I walked into the office and there was no people, no lineup. And I'm thinking, oh, I might get an appointment right now. But the receptionist looked at me and she said, we don't have any doctors available. All appointments are gone. So listen what she suggested. Office opens at 7 a.m. Come tomorrow morning around 5 a.m. There are going to be a lineup of people because every day they have very certain amount of appointments available. And if I'm lucky, I get to see doctor. And I said, thank you, but no. In Mexico, you can receive appointment with a specialist in couple of days or sometimes at the same day of your request and of course you have to pay but it is very affordable i have a video about me receiving a medical emergency help going through the small operation linked below so if you want to know all the details about how attentive and how good the doctors are in mexico and how much i paid watch this video in Mexico, if you want to see a doctor, you have a few options. So the first one, you can go to the office to see a doctor for about 50 pesos. Uh, you pay for the visit. And it is about three for three US dollars for Canadian. Second option is to go to Clinica Gratis, free clinic when you give just donation to the doctor for the visit and i see mexicans leave about 10 20 pesos i went to clinica gratis twice one time i was traveling in acapulco and another time i went in nuevo nayari i was really satisfied with both times i was satisfied with the medical service i received from this clinica gratis and I usually leave about 200 pesos, like a little bit over $10. The third option is you can deliver. Doctor comes to your house. My daughter and two of her kids recently went through bad flu. She called the doctor in the morning and it, the same day in the evening at 6 p.m. doctor came to visit them. He checked each of them he prescribed the medication spent two hours and for this visit he charged 2600 pesos which is 
200 Canadian, 160 US dollars. And then three days later, he called to follow up with them. Isn't that amazing? What do you think, friends? Where medical service is better? In Canada or Mexico? No brainer for me, Mexico. Beyond these social issues, Vancouver is also grappling with the high cost of living. Rental prices have skyrocketed. One of my friends lives in suburb of Vancouver, 40 minutes sky train to downtown. He rents one bedroom apartment in this building on the fourth floor and his rent for unfurnished one bedroom apartment is 1800 canadian dollars a month utilities and parking are not included rent on the higher up floors with the better views goes up to 2400 a month and shelter for homeless is just two blocks down the road from this building now, if you want to rent a modern one-bedroom apartment in the west end of Vancouver, close to the English Bay, and maybe with a little bit of the ocean view, you pay 6,500 Canadian dollars a month. Who can afford it? In Mexico, I live in Nuevo Nayarit, in a very safe neighborhood and the building is located five seven minutes walk from the beach the building has great amenities such as pool gym small library and common room i rent two bedroom fully furnished apartment and by the way link of the video tour of my apartment is attached in the description below so you can check it out and for this two bedroom apartment i pay 1100 us dollars a month uh, 50 70 dollars more for utilities and some of my followers um, comment that i pay too much for rent in mexico really i don't think so what do you think friends today i'm gonna do grocery shopping at walmart and compare the prices Canada versus Mexico. Are you curious, friends? Let's go. I'm back home from Walmart and let me tell you this. Uh, meat, dairy products, cheese cost about the same as um, in Mexico. Vegetables, fruits and greens are more expensive in Canada. And not only more expensive, they don't taste the same as we used to in Mexico. Mangoes are so expensive, $5 for two. It is a mango season right now in Mexico and you go to Walmart and pay 10 pesos, which is less than $1 for one kilo, 2.2 pounds. Uh, also, we have many different types of mango trees growing naturally on the streets and in, in the neighborhoods. We go and we pick it up from the trees or from the ground and they are so ripe and so ready to eat, so yummy. Now, what is more expensive in Mexico is chocolate. Uh, in Puerto Vallarta, I pay $8 for this kind of chocolate. And at Walmart, I bought three chocolate bars for $11 and I paid $7 for three chocolate bars of this kind my grandkids are going to be happy. One more thing I want to talk about is bus service. So while I'm visiting in Vancouver, I don't have a car and I take SkyTrain and I walk everywhere. One time I decided to take a bus. So I am on the bus station and waiting for the bus to come and kind of walking around. Then I see the buses turning around the corner and moving and looks like it's not going to stop. So I waved and I see the bus driver saw me waving, but he just slowly drove away. He didn't stop. 
And you know, it was no any sign on the bus. Sometimes it says like, I'm out of service or I'm full. No, nothing like that. He just drove away. And I was just like, uh, what did just happen? Then my friends told me, you have to be standing right on the bus stop and not walking around. And I said, what? Now I'm gonna tell you how it works in Mexico. You don't have to be on the designated bus stops to get on the bus or get off the bus. You see your bus is coming, you wave at the bus driver, he stops, picks you up. Same thing when you need to get off, you just tell the bus driver where you need to get off. That's easy. Maybe I'm just spoiled now by this bus service in Mexico. What do you think? And now to wrap it up, I want to say that in my personal opinion and experience, quality of life, cost of living, and life in general in Mexico is much better than in Canada. What do you think, friends? Share your thoughts and let the conversation and discussion go in. My two months vacation in Vancouver is almost over. It's crazy, time flies by so fast. I will be going back home soon and will be traveling more in Mexico to discover new opportunities for better lifestyle and better weather in Mexico. So well, friends, if you like this video, don't forget to like it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to stay tuned and Thank you for watching to the very end. Ciao, ciao. Until next one.